It's Sienna week, and boy do I have a spicy build for you guys today. This is my go-to battle wizard build. It does maximum damage, and it has maximum survivability. I use it all the time. But before we get into that, let's talk about battle wizard. Her passive ability, Tranquility. After not casting spells for 6 seconds, automatically ventilates overcharge. So this is really good if you do a bunch of casting. You can go back to melee and wait for your uh, overheat to go down. Her career skill, Firewalk. Sienna teleports forward, leaving a blanket of fire in her wake that lingers for 6 seconds. So a nice dash forward, it stuns enemies, it knocks them back, and it leaves a little fire trail. She's also got Reckless Haste. Overcharge increases spell charge speed by up to 30%, and Pyromanic Surge increases range damage by 10%. So for today's build, the melee weapon of choice is the Fire Sword. This is for its staggering ability and its crazy temp health generation. For that, you're obviously going to want to confound staggering enemies for THP. You do low initial damage, but with this build, you're going to do lots of burn damage, so it's not going to be completely useless as a melee weapon for damage. And on top of that, you make tons of temp health, so it's really good and a no-brainer of a choice. On the level 10 line, we're going for Famished Flames here. Burning damage over time is increased by 150%. All non-burn damage is reduced by 30%. So this is what I was talking about with the Fire Sword. Its initial damage is already quite low, so a 30% reduction doesn't mean much. But the burn damage gets a two and a half times boost. This is also going to be really good for the staff today. The staff naturally on its own already does a lot of damage. So with Famous Flames, you're doing two and a half times more damage. The only thing with this talent and that staff is the shotgun is reduced a little bit. The only choice on the level 15 line is Enhanced Power. Increases your total power level by 7.5%. This is going to boost your range damage a little bit more. On level 20, I like Unusually Calm. It reduces the cooldown from Tranquility from six seconds to three seconds so you're automatically ventilating that much faster which is going to help you as you can cast 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 and then you start to slow down when you get to that high overheat and then you just switch back to melee you know, with the fire sword a couple swipes at a horde make a bunch of temp health back to the staff because you're already venting at that point level 25 is a fun line uh fires from the ash gives you cooldown off your ult which is cool if you don't mind you know being a glass cannon basically uh this is a fine talent to take for sure personally i think soot shield is too good to pass up igniting an enemy reduces damage taken by 10 percent for five seconds stacks up to three times so essentially a constant 30 percent damage reduction that's the same amount that Ironbreaker has, by the way, though it makes her pretty dang tanky. On the level 30 line, I'm choosing to go with the ultimate Burnout. Firewalk can be activated a second time within 10 seconds, so when you use your ult, you of course dash and leave a little fire trail. You then have 10 seconds to dash again. Um, you see, you can either go double the distance forward or you can go back to where you came from. Um, I think this one's really good, even with Famished Flames, as you do, you know, of course you're doing more burn damage with your dash, but this one just provides so much mobility and so much survivability to help you and your teammates out. They, like, two of your teammates get hook ratted, or one gets hooked and one gets assassined or something. You can dash at one of them, free it, and dash at the other one, and free that guy in, like, a, the blink of an eye. It's super useful. For the gear, as I mentioned, the melee weapon is the Fire Sword, attack speed, block cost reduction, and opportunist attack speed. In my opinion, makes this weapon feel a little bit nicer. I think it's just a tad bit slow on its own. I'm going to end up giving it 10% attack speed, 5 from the weapon and 5 from the charm. And then block cost reduction, I'm going to have an additional 30% on my necklace. You give me 60, that's going to help if I need to tank overheads. So I like opportunist a lot more than, say, like Swiftling or something here because what it does is it increases the push strength by 50% when used against an attacking enemy. But it's not just the push strength, it's also the strength when you attack. So if you use a heavy attack against a Chaos Warrior or something, all these things add together, and a lot of the time you can stagger a Chaos Warrior, depending on his animation. But any other enemy, you can pretty much put on their ass. For the range weapon, I go with the Coruscation Staff, because it's an absolute beast. You're a bit limited on long-range specials, but you... Devastate hordes, you devastate monsters. I run Power vs. Chaos, Power vs. Infantry, and Thermal Equalizer because 
the overcharge generated on this weapon is kind of a lot, so you kind of have to run thermal. Now the coruscation staff is a bit of a weird weapon. It has like three different kinds of damage depending on location. So the idea is just to cast as many of these during a horde or any of these on a monster as possible. What's great about Famished Flames, really the biggest difference between Famished Flames and say like Lingering Flames, you can stack damage over time effects with Famished Flames. So if you cast a bunch of geysers on a monster, those are all going to be working at the same time. On the necklace, I run extra health, block cost reduction, and bark skin extra health because that's going to let you make more temp health. Block cost reduction for blocking, taking overheads, and big scary attacks that could potentially kill you. And then bark skin, if you take two or more hits, your subsequent damage is reduced by 40% for two seconds. This is really good if you get like pounced by an assassin, if you get like hit like two or three times at once by enemies, but you'll be taking less damage and it stacks with your soot shield multiplicatively. So, you know, people who are good at math can figure out what that number is, but it's a considerable amount of damage reduction from a class that does a lot of damage. And then on the charm, I run uh, just 5% attack speed for the fire sword just to make it feel a little bit nicer. 10% power is chaos and concoction so I can get burnout back whenever I want with any kind of potion. And for the trinket, I go for some cooldown reduction because I want to ult as much as possible. Stamina recovery just to be defensive. And shrapnel in the event that I don't have like a witch or captain on my team. So that's the build guys. Let me know if you've played Sienna in this way ever. I feel like it's a Fairly common setup to have, just a little simple Famished Flames, Coruscation Staff, Fire Sword setup. Um, it probably is meta on her, but it is very, very powerful. She does lots of damage. If she doesn't completely outright kill the Horde herself, she'll soften it up for her teammates. Same story with Elites, just by burning them. You know, could do like, you'd probably take half their health away just by burning them. Guys, that's it for me. If you like this build, feel free to subscribe to this channel, leave me a like, Leave a comment down below. I also have a Twitch and a Discord. Links to those will be in the description down below. Take care, guys.